Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar entitled Using the ITSI Functional Diet Scale to Capture Dysphagia Outcomes. My name is Katrina Steele, and along with Dr. Ashwini Namasivayam McDonald, we will be the instructors for this webinar. This is a recording of a talk that we delivered at the ASHA Convention in November 2019 in Orlando. These are our disclosures, and I will just highlight that I am a board member of IDSI, the International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative. Ashwini and I are also both authors on the paper regarding the development of the IDSI Functional Diet Scale that we will be discussing in this webinar. So this is the agenda for this webinar. I will begin with some introduction and a review of other diet tolerance outcome scales that you may already be familiar with. We'll then introduce the ITSI functional diet scale and show how it is similar or different to those other diet outcome scales. And then Ashwini will lead you through a number of case examples that will help you to know how to score the diet of a particular patient on the ITSI functional diet scale, and we'll introduce some nuances on the scale that will capture things like diet progression in therapy. So as background, we all recognize that diet texture modification has become the most frequently recommended intervention for dysphagia. It's widely used and is a component of the treatment plan for dysphagia in most cases. And it has been suggested, therefore, that tracking a person's progression from one diet texture to another could serve, therefore, as an outcome measure that reflects their improvement or failure to improve with respect to their swallowing function. As we developed the International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative framework, we recognized that we were introducing new terminology regarding the different levels of food and drink that might be in a person's diet. And therefore, the existing functional diet outcome scales really didn't fit with the framework. And as we reviewed them, we felt that they lacked clarity and sensitivity to change. So as I'm sure you're aware, the ITSI framework is in the process of being implemented worldwide. And right now in North America, we're really in the thick of the early stages of implementation. And so it's an important question to figure out whether existing diet outcome scales might help us to track progression with the ITSI framework or whether we do need a new ITSI related diet outcome scale, which is our conclusion. But let me start by taking you through some of the existing diet tolerance outcome scales and highlighting for you how we came to the decision that we needed to develop a new scale. When you look in the literature for functional diet outcome scales, one of the earliest ones that is published is this Swallowing Performance Status Scale by Salama and colleagues. And I'll just highlight some of the elements of the design of this scale. First, you'll note that there are seven levels on this scale, and that actually will be a recurring theme that we'll see that many of these scales have seven levels. You can see in this case that a score of seven is the worst score on this scale, reflecting severe impairment and a patient who is deemed unable to take any oral intake safely and therefore requires enteral feeding. And on the opposite end of this scale, we have a one that's called normal swallowing. One of the things you can see in this scale is that it measures or describes more than one thing. So it captures both a comment about the severity of the dysphagia itself. It refers to the diet that has been recommended, and it makes reference to therapeutic precautions that might be recommended on top of the diet texture prescription. So it's not focusing only on diet texture. You can see here that there are qualitative descriptions like moderate to severe, and we see that 
aspiration as a phenomenon is part of the severity description of a person's dysphagia. And you can see here that there are really only three types of diet modification mentioned. First of all, we have no oral intake and tube dependency at level seven. And at level six, we still have tube feeding, but it is supplemental in addition to some oral intake. And then as you go across the levels from six to two, what we see is the word modified diet or the word regular diet. And there's no further description of what those modifications might entail. So that the minute you alter one consistency on a person's diet, then they would get a score reflecting some degree of intervention here that might reflect an underlying swallowing impairment. A second diet outcome scale that you might be more familiar with is the DOS, the Dysphagia Outcome and Severity Scale. And in fact, the DOS is still quite widely used in research today. And it was a scale that formed some of the background framework for the previous national dysphagia diet that has existed in North America. Like the Swallowing Performance Status Scale, this has seven levels, but you can see that they are organized in the opposite direction. So here the most severe scale score that you could get is a one, reflecting no oral intake and tube dependency. And at the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a level seven with an oral diet and absolutely no diet restrictions. In between, we have a similar situation to what I described with the previous scale. Here, we don't have quite so much reference to swallowing severity, but we're focusing more clearly on the diet prescription. And we see a range of the amount of oral intake from partial to complete. We can see also mention of the number of consistencies that a person is considered to be able to manage. And so that goes from one to more than two. And we see mention here of the need for strategies or assistance modifying each level on the scale. Now, this mention of there being a number of consistencies that are included implies that we somehow have a reference perspective that we know how many consistencies it's possible for a person to consume. And this is one of the weaknesses of this scale is that there is no background context that clearly defines whether more than two consistencies means three or seven or 10 or quite how many there are. Uh, I'll just mention also that the ASHA NOMS scale regarding diet intake is very, very similar to the DOS. And so these uh, descriptions should look quite familiar if you've been using the ASHA NOMS scale. A third scale that is prominent in the current literature is the Functional Oral Intake Scale, or the FOICE, developed by Dr. Curry and Dr. Mann and Dr. Grower in Florida. And you can see here that the descriptions are also quite similar to the DOS in that we have, again, seven levels organized from one being the worst to seven being the least restrictive. And here, again, we don't have comments about the severity of the swallowing impairment. We focus in on the types of food that are recommended. And you can see here also mention of a number of consistencies in the wording of a single consistency or multiple consistencies. But again, no reference perspective in terms of how many consistencies might be possible. You can also see a distinction here between levels five and six, where mention is made of special preparation of those consistencies or the need for compensations uh, in addition to the diet texture restriction, but very little description of that.
Now, the voice is quite widely used and did undergo some psychometric validation at the point where it was originally published. Subsequently, I've had reason to have conversations with Dr. Query to better understand this scale, and it turns out that the intent here was actually only to describe food restrictions rather than drink restrictions. Even though you can see here the wording does refer to liquid at levels 2 and 3. And I would say that even though Dr. Query and Dr. Mann might have had that caveat in mind, the actual use of the scale uh, it, by clinicians and by researchers currently does not restrict use of the voice only to the food side of a person's diet. So that's just a very quick review of three available diet outcome related scales in the literature. There are more. And if you go to the article that we wrote about the development of the IDC-FDS, we actually cover about seven existing scales. So there's a bit more information in the article. But as you know, I hope, uh, the International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative Framework was first published in 2016 and is now in the process of implementation. And as we were developing this scale, there were a few breakthrough moments where we were able to clarify historic issues with respect to diet texture. One of the big breakthroughs that we made in the development was the recognition that the consistencies of moderately thick drinks and extremely thick drinks were in fact the same as the consistencies of liquidized foods and pureed foods. And so you'll be familiar, I hope, with the decision that we made to have a continuum of levels in the framework from zero on the thin liquid side through to regular food on the opposite end with an overlap between the food pyramid and the drink pyramid at levels three and four. An important concept that comes with the framework is that in order to describe the food and drinks that are going to comprise a person's recommended diet, we need to specify both the food side and the drink side of their diet. So for example, you would be familiar with historically saying a pureed diet with thickened liquids, and perhaps you would have said nectar thick liquids. So here we would say a level four pureed food with a level two mildly thick liquid to capture both of those elements of the recommended diet. And what we came to appreciate is that in specifying those levels, level four pureed food and level two mildly thick liquid, because the ITSI framework spans a continuum, there's an intermediate level of level three moderately thick liquids or level three liquidized foods. And the question becomes, is it suitable and appropriate when you've recommended pureed food and mildly thick liquids that a person might also receive a thicker liquid than the mildly thick and a thinner consistency than the pureed food, provided that it doesn't go beyond those levels that you've just mentioned. So we began to think of the prescription or recommendation of a person's diet levels as spanning a range on the framework and that the labels of pureed food and mildly thick liquids in this case would represent boundaries and that the person's diet should be built in between those boundaries, but that we felt it would be perfectly fine for a person who was prescribe pureed food and mildly thick liquids to also receive items at level three. And this is conceptually, I think, a different approach than we've had historically. And I'll admit as a speech language pathologist that it was really a bit of a wake up moment for me to realize that when I say pureed food, perhaps not every item of food on the tray would fall into level four but that because there's a range, it might also be possible for there to be some variety in the consistency of the food items, including some level three items. And I, over time, have become quite comfortable with that concept.
So this concept of range actually underpins the whole approach that we have to scoring diet tolerance or recommended diet range using the ITSE functional diet scale. So here, because we've discussed boundaries of level four pureed food and level two mildly thick liquid, in order to score on the scale, what you have to do is count the number of levels on the framework that fall between those boundaries including the levels that are mentioned in the recommendation. And you can see here that that would span three levels on the framework, and that would give this person an ITSE functional diet scale of three. And I've shown also on the right hand of the slide a mileage chart kind of organization of this approach, where you can see the two prescriptions intersecting in the middle at a value of three. So important just to mention that the recommended structure of a diet recommendation at the moment has three components. The first would be the nutritional specification. So for example, perhaps low sodium or gluten-free, something like that, that would speak to the dietitians about the nutrients and any restrictions that are needed there. Second, it's conventional to describe the food consistency that is recommended. And then third, to describe the liquid consistency that is recommended. So that concept of defining a range of levels on the ITSE framework from which the diet can be built for a patient is what informed and influenced the design of the ITSE functional diet scale. We conducted quite a bit of validation of the scale at the point of its development and all of that research into its psychometric properties and how people performed in terms of accurately and reliably assigning scores is described in the article, which is shown on the slide. And what we're going to do now is move into some case scenarios of patients where we describe a little bit of the swallowing information that we have and the diet that the clinician is about to recommend. And together we will assign both an ITSE functional diet scale score and a FOIS score so that you can compare the two scales and understand how they would be similar or different in their use. The first case we are going to consider is that of a 45-year-old man who is referred to you for follow-up assessment after three months of discharge from a stroke rehabilitation center. He has an immense and moist food texture with mildly thick liquids. Assessment shows that he aspirates thin liquids, but slightly thick liquids prove to be safe. With minced and moist food textures, there is quite significant residue in his pharynx. Based on your assessment, you decide to recommend a diet change to pureed foods and slightly thick liquids. So what score would this man get on the voice? So because this is our first example, let's work through this a little bit together. First of all, you know that he's not tube dependent, so we can automatically eliminate voice levels 1, 2, and 3. We also know that he has some restrictions. So we can eliminate level seven. We're recommending two different consistencies. So we can eliminate level four. So now we've eliminated level one, two, three, four, and seven. So we need to make a choice between levels five and six. So is he on a total oral diet with multiple consistencies that require special preparation or compensations? Or is he on a total oral diet with multiple consistencies with no special preparation? I'll give you a minute to think about it. Now looking at this diet of pureed foods and slightly thick liquids, we can assume that they will require special preparation. So we would give this gentleman a FOIS score of five. We now need to determine the gentleman's it's the FDS score. In order to find this, we need to consider both the food recommendation and the drink recommendation. Our first step 
is to use the CFDS chart to determine where he falls. So we take the pureed food recommendation and find that along the top of the chart. Then we take the recommendation of slightly thick liquids and we find that along the right side of the chart. And then we go across to determine that this gentleman gets an EDC FDS score of four. Now really, as Katrina mentioned previously, we need to keep in mind that the EDC FDS score is really representative of the number of levels this gentleman is able to consume. So it's a bracketed system. So given that he is able to have pureed foods and slightly thick liquids, we can count slightly thick as one level, mildly thick as a second, moderately thick as a third, and the pureed as a fourth. So he spans four levels on the framework, which is also equivalent to his score for the ITSI FDS. Let's try another example. Now we have an 11-year-old child with spastic cerebral palsy who has been managing well on a soft and bite-sized diet with mildly thick liquids. On the soft lunch diet at this child's new school, sandwiches are frequently offered containing things such as an egg salad or tuna salad with the crust removed. Your evaluation of this child suggests that they will not be able to tolerate bread. Given this information, you recommend eliminating bread and cutting all food prior to serving, so that is level 6, soft and bite-sized. Now, just to keep in mind, a minced and moist sandwich made with breadcrumbs would be allowed. You recommend continuation of mildly thick liquids. So what score would this child get on the voice? Now, once again, in this case, there's no mention of a tube. So we can eliminate levels 1, 2, and 3. We also know that this child is on multiple consistencies, so we can eliminate level 4. Now there are some restrictions, so once again we can eliminate level 7. So now we have a similar decision as before. Is this a diet of multiple consistencies which require special preparation? or is there no special preparation required? As you might guess, this child should get a FOICE score of five total oral diet with multiple consistencies requiring special preparation. Now we need to consider this child's ITSI FDS score, keeping in mind that the diet recommendation was soft and bite-sized foods and mildly thick liquids. What score would this child get on the ITSI FDS? First, along the chart on the right hand side, we're going to look at the top and find the food recommendation, level six. We're then going to look at the right side of the chart and find the drink recommendation, mildly thick level two. If you look at the score, we now find that this person has an ITSI FDS score of five. That's because of this bracketed system. Now, if we look closely, we can see that from mildly thick to soft and bite size, there are five levels, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're making the assumption that if they are able to have mildly thick liquids, they can also have moderately thick and extremely thick. And if they can have soft and bite sized foods, they can also have minced and moist and pureed. Now, it will be important that you actually do the tests to make sure that they can consume these foods and drinks, but this is the assumption we make. Our third example centers around a 56-year-old man who has completed a recent course of radiation therapy with chemotherapy for laryngeal cancer. A G-tube was placed prior to treatment. He has been using the feeding tube as his primary source of nutrition. He's feeling very unwell and experiencing a great deal of pain at this stage of his recovery due to mucositis. He is silently aspirating thin and slightly thick liquids. You recommend that he stay on the G-tube feeding for nutritional support, but try to swallow small amounts of mildly thick liquid throughout the day as a way of trying to maintain regular swallowing. You also recognize that his oral intake will likely not happen every day, depending on how the patient is feeling. 
based on this information, you make no food recommendation because he's taking everything by G-tube. In terms of a drink prescription, you're recommending G-tube plus occasional sips of mildly thick liquid. Given this information, what score would this patient get on the voice? So right away, we can eliminate levels four, five, six, and seven, because we know that this patient is taking the majority of his nutrition through the tube. However, we have this drink prescription of occasional sips of mildly thick liquid. So how do we take that into account? Well, we know they're not totally tube dependent, so we can eliminate level one. And we know that this intake of liquid will not be consistent, so we can eliminate level three. We're left with level two, tube dependent with minimal attempts of food or liquid. Now let's determine this person's ITSI-FDS score. Remember, there's no true food recommendation and the drink recommendation is G-tube plus occasional sips of mildly thick liquid. So what score would this man get on the ITSI-FDS? So we have no food recommendation, and we're just looking at occasional sips of mildly thick liquid. So actually, this person would get a score of zero. We're not spanning any of the levels on the framework. The main prescription is G-tube. However, we're going to put a diacritic beside this zero, so zero plus. And really, this annotation has the potential to be added to any score on the ITSI-FDS to indicate progress towards tolerance of a greater variety of diet texture levels. The diacritic is simply intended to indicate that some progress away from the specified restriction is being introduced and monitored. Example 4 has us working with a mother of a baby who has been having difficulty tolerating thin liquids without aspiration. You determine that the baby is able to swallow slightly thick liquids safely, but that if too much thickener is added, the baby has difficulty expressing fluid through the nipple of the bottle and seems to fatigue very quickly. Given this information, you don't have a food recommendation because it's an infant and they're not on solids yet, but the drink prescription is slightly thick fluids. So what score would this patient get on the voice? So not tube dependent, right? So we're going to eliminate levels one, two, and three. We also know that there are some restrictions. We're elimin eliminating level seven. Now we also know that there's not multiple consistencies here. There's a single prescription, slightly thick liquids. So we can eliminate levels five and six. We're left with level four, total oral diet, but only of a single consistency. So, with this diet recommendation of just slightly thick liquids, what score would this baby get on the ACFDS? Now, remember, we go across the top of the chart and indicate the food level. So, in this case, we're going to look at the column that says not applicable. We're not recommending a food level. We're then going to go down the side of the chart that looks at drink levels and find the appropriate drink level there. One slightly thick liquids. Now remember, this is a bracketed system. How many levels on the framework is this patient able to consume? And in this case, just one. So the score would be one here. Let's look at another example. Here we have a 52-year-old man who has a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis and is having difficulty swallowing, which he thinks is mostly caused by fatigue. On evaluation, you determine that he has significant residue with most food textures and even with extremely thick liquids, but he seems to be able to swallow liquids in the thin to moderately thick range without residue. He does not seem to experience any issues of aspiration. You decide to recommend a diet including thin, slightly thick, and mildly thick liquids as well as moderately thick liquids. What score would this patient get on the voice? So right away, we eliminate levels one, two, and three, because there's no tubes involved. We know that there's more than one consistency, 
so we eliminate level 4. There are some restrictions, so we eliminate level 7. And there's special preparation needed to prepare these liquids, so we end up with a score of 5. Now you might notice that many of the cases we are looking at today end up with four scores of 5. Now let's figure out this patient's ITSI FDS score, remembering that the diet recommendation was thin, slightly thick, mildly thick, and moderately thick liquids. Now, based on what we've been doing before, we would consider the food recommendation and the drink recommendation. Now remember, moderately thick drinks are equivalent to liquidized foods. So we could go across the food level to level three, and then find the drink level of level three. But this would only result in a score of one. We know from this bracketed system, this person can have more than just one ITSI level, so that can't be right. Instead, we can consider the thin liquid recommendation as one level, the slightly thick as a second, mildly thick as a third, and moderately thick as a fourth. So the prescription spans four levels, giving us an IDSI FDS score of four. Our next example involves an 82-year-old woman residing in a nursing home. She is referred to you after a nurse notices she hasn't been finishing her meals. The resident is currently consuming a diet of regular solids and thin liquids. On evaluation, you see that her dentures are so loose and they are falling out when she eats. You suggest that she try eating without the dentures and determine that she needs food textures that are easy to chew. So the food recommendation is easy to chew and the drink prescription is maintained on thin liquids. What score would this patient get on the FOICE? So we're right away eliminating levels 1, 2, and 3. There's no tubes involved here. There's more than one consistency, so we'll eliminate number 4. There are some restrictions, so we'll eliminate number 7. So do we need special preparation for thin liquids and easy to chew foods? I would say no. So this patient would get a score of 6. Now let's figure out the ITSI FDS score. Remember, the diet recommendation is easy to chew foods and thin liquids. Now, easy to chew is a relatively recent addition to level seven on the ITSI framework. So it actually falls under regular. It's somewhere between soft and bite-sized and regular solids. We're just having something that's a little bit softer but doesn't need to be bite-sized. Therefore, along the food level, on our chart, we're actually going to still look at level 7. Now given the thin liquid recommendation, we're going to find the score of 0 along the right side of our chart to get a total ITSI-FDS score of 8. Technically, this person can have food and drinks across the ITSI framework. A score of 8 is the highest score we can give someone, and it alludes to a diet that is essentially unrestricted. Thank you so much for listening to this webinar, and we would be happy to take any questions um, by emailing tri-swallowinglab at uhn.ca.